Hello, this is Lolly. Today I want to play with some inks, and I have a project. This is a Catherine Pooler All That Jazz. I have a project that I want to kind of waterproof a little bit and make it a little more permanent. Now, her inks, just like Distress Oxide, so if you have the Ranger Distress Oxides, if you spray, the water activates the ink, and if you spray a lot, it'll start running. You see how this is, the ink is running right here and it leaves these little watery droplet looking areas. I'm gonna dry that so we can get moving here. Okay, but I have a project that I want to make a little more waterproof. So let's do this. Unfortunately, this stencil has been sitting out without its um, paper to show what it actually, uh, the name of the stencil. I think it might be the Crafter's Workshop. Now, these inks stay damp for quite a while, just like the Distress Oxides, and so I want to heat set that a little bit. I also want my paper to cool, and I want to use this micro glaze. This is by Judy Kens. You might be familiar with uh, Tim Holtz having a micro glaze as well. I believe he has a space in between the two words, but this is where he got his micro glaze from. He's marketing her her uh, chemical product here, so it feels nice and cool. So all you have to do, it feels like Vaseline. It's I'm just dipping my touching my finger to it. And I'm just going to rub that in. It really doesn't take much at all. And I know you can't really see this. And even if I were to zoom in, you still wouldn't be able to see it. So what this does is it helps the ink to become more permanent and waterproof. I think I got a good coating on there. It says, apply sparingly over artwork for a smudge resistant waterproof finish can be buffed to a gloss. Protects inks, dyes, paints, acrylics, watercolors, and inkjet printing. And for more information, goes to go to microglaze.com. Contains paraffinic oils and waxes. Okay, acid free by the way, for those of you who are wanting to know. So what I'm going to do, we're supposed to buff this and I want something pretty soft, so I'm just going to use a facial tissue here and just kind of smooth that over. I, I didn't wait long enough, I can tell. I didn't wait long enough. The ink wasn't quite dry when I did this because I have a itty bitty bit of smudge right there. So, <clears throat> I think I'm going to hit this once again just because I didn't really let that ink dry before I did that. Okay, you do have to make sure, like I said, these inks stay damp for quite a while. And now, I don't see any instructions at all about how soon we would need to wait. Do we, you know, is this immediately waterproof? Do we need to let this set and dry up? So let's give it a test. Let's hit it with a spray. It's just beating up. I don't know if you can see the droplets right there. It's just beating up on my product and not soaking into the paper. This is a game changer. Let me set this aside. And I want to show you the project that I have that I want to seal. And that is this. I have colored this in with um, Catherine Pooler's inks. And all you do is take a Zig marker, blender pen, excuse me, a Zig blender pen or a Marvie blender pen dip it in there and then just dip it and color in the areas you want to so these are her inks i will give you a link down below to me coloring this in but in the meantime i do want to coat this with the micro glaze although this is not going to hurt my surface at all if i get this on my on my project on my white paper here
I think what I might do is take a Q-tip and get like underneath these. I think this will make me so happy that I won't have to worry constantly about getting water spills on this. I am that clumsy. Yes, I am. And these inks are so vibrant, just like the Distress Oxides, but you don't want them bleeding or getting water spots on them. This was like a sample size of the microglaze. At least I think it's a sample size, and it was given to me in at Creativation when I took a class by Judykins and loved, um, loved the class. I just want to make sure that I am getting, I'm going back and forth over it, and I think I might even go like this way now. Because it's just such a large surface, I just want to make sure I'm getting good coverage, and I think I am. You never know. And then off camera, like I said, I can take, I can get pretty far with my finger, but not all the way in there. I'm just going between the little teeth. I don't even need a, a Q-tip to do this. Okay, so all we need to do is to buff that. You see, I hardly used any, and I did a big surface of this. Okay, I don't know why that wasn't focused, so let me just give this a little bit of a buffing. And I'm actually, I don't know, but I'm actually kind of pushing down on this to kind of really get that into the papers and you can see there's no ink on my tissue here I'm just kind of folding it over so I can get a dry spot oh this feels really good I love this project. It is so beautiful. This is their Doodle Garden stamp, which is what's on the cover here. And I was so thrilled to know that they also had this coloring page on the inside. This feels really good. I'm thinking I should probably also cover, uh, seal this so that um, that doesn't get the same issue that this did. Granted, I'm not going to have this on the table when I'm drinking or anything, but you never know. What if it's in a notebook? and someone else spills something, or I do. Very beautiful. I love that it preserves the colors. Now, it does have a slight, slight waxy feel to it. I did test to see if I could then take uh, one of my permanent markers, like a Micron, and write over the surface, and I could not. Um, but, so I would need to do this, if I was going to write on any of this, write, do the writing first and then do the sealing. So this is waterproofing it. Yay! I am um, looking into getting some of this for my shop and so far I'm in love with it. Thank you so much for watching.